In my last video, I outlined why it is that so many libertarian-minded people believe the dollar is headed towards collapse. If you're new to this subject, it's natural to assume that we're all exaggerating, and are probably overstating the problem in order to scare people for our own personal gain, whether it be for votes, money, or YouTube popularity. This level of cynicism is perfectly healthy. In fact, anytime anybody is trying to convince you that the sky is falling, it's probably a good idea to assume that they're full of it, because most of the time, you'd be correct. There is money to be made and power to be gained out of fear. Anyone who believes everything they're spoon-fed by a person or political party is probably an idiot. Regardless of who your idols might be, they're human after all, so always keep that in mind. That said, there are plenty of reasons to believe we're on the path towards a collapse in the dollar. Most of them are historical. First of all, there's only one way to avoid a collapse in our currency, and that is to stop printing money. This sounds simple enough, but as I explained in my last video, to do this, you must first balance the budget. There are only two things you can do to balance the budget. You either have to increase taxes, reduce government spending, or some combination of the two. If you know your history, you know that the only time our budget has been balanced within the past 40 years was a brief period that occurred a decade ago under President Clinton. Many believe that even this tiny blip of fiscal sanity was actually an accident. As you can see from this graph, never in his eight years in office did Clinton ever reduce government spending. The reason the budget became balanced was in small part due to an increase in individual income taxes, but mostly due to an unexpected increase in tax revenues due to the boom and bubble in our economy occurring at the time. A boom like that of the late 1990s is extremely unlikely to occur within the next few decades. In addition, raising taxes in the foreseeable future would have a devastating effect on our already beleaguered economy. Paradoxically, increasing taxes now may lead to even less revenue. Therefore, the only option that remains is to dramatically reduce government spending and to pay down the national debt. This is where the trouble begins. Government spending has risen, in real terms, almost every year for the past 60 years. Obama has promised to cut the 2010 budget from its all-time high in 2009. But if you exclude 2009, his budget projection still requires a deficit three times as big as the record set by President Bush. Obviously, the bailouts were to blame for most of the spending increases in 2009. But when you look at the 2008 budget, you can clearly see that our problems will not end when the bailouts do. Even without the bailouts, the budget is still too large and the debt grows larger every day. Many people are also under the mistaken impression that the war in Iraq plays a significant role in our budget shortfall. Even if you took out Iraq spending, the deficit still remains. On top of all that, the tax revenue for 2009 going forward is going to be much lower. This would require an even greater reduction in spending to balance the budget. When you factor in the bailouts, things get even worse. Even by extremely conservative estimates, like the one provided by the government itself, our debt will overtake our GDP in less than two decades. So what do you think? Does it look like we're doing anything about our currency situation? Would any of our politicians risk losing an election in a futile attempt to persuade Congress to save our currency? What if the necessary spending cuts are in Medicare or Social Security? Coming out in favor of cutting either of those programs is practically a death sentence to a politician's career. With all that in mind, do the warnings of hyperinflation and collapse in the dollar seem all that far-fetched?